Elite Physique University, your source for all things physique enhancement. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Elite Physique University. I'm John Gorman, one of your hosts for today. We've got Jason Theobald in the house looking nice and trim. What's going on, Jason? How are you, man? I'm doing all right. I can't complain. We've got a hell of a topic lined up for today. Um, this is one of our master's class series with a PowerPoint presentation, uh, basically everything covering the thyroid. So give our listeners real quick uh, a rundown of why this is important. And you presented on this for the first time at our Elite Physique University seminar down in Tampa. It yeah. helped so many people understand the nuances. So why is this such an important topic? Yeah. So, you know, the thyroid... Um... The gland itself and like the processes, it seems like it's a, it's a little complicated with all the different little things that we will talk about in terms of releasing this and releasing that and signaling this. The ultimate goal is to have, you know, T3 made and that's going to be the driver of your metabolism. So the, think of the thyroid as, you know, the driver of metabolic function um, and T3 is what fuels that that metabolic function. Um and we'll get into, you know, free T3 and how that's really the most important. That's the unbound. But uh, yeah, the thyroid, it runs the the metabolic machinery. Yeah. And this is something too, as we go, um, if you want to go ahead and share the page, I'll let our listeners know. As we go, um, feel free to leave comments if you're watching on YouTube, which is where you can see this full uh, PowerPoint presentation. If you're listening on a podcast, go over and find it on the Team Gorman YouTube page. Um, but Feel free to leave questions like we answer that kind of stuff. We want to make sure that you guys get all the, the questions answered that you have. And if you ever want to contact us, look in the description, either the show notes, if you're watching on a podcast or description on YouTube, uh, our emails there. If you ever have a question, you can always hit us up. We're not the type of people that are going to add you to an email list and spam you and do that stuff like that. It's not about that. We just want to make sure that that you get your your uh, answers to your questions, especially on a topic like this. So, uh, Jason, what's going to happen um, whenever you present here? I'm going to think of questions as we go that maybe our, yeah. our audience would think about. And, and we'll probably either do those as we go or at the end. So go ahead, man. Take it away. All right. So I tried to condense this down to make it as simple as possible. We'll see. We'll see how that goes for us. So again, we kind of refresh on what we just talked about. What does the thyroid do? Produces hormones that help regulate metabolic function, right? So this in turn controls the heart, your musculature, digestive function. You know, if your thyroid is downregulated, you're not going to digest as well. Brain development, bone maintenance. So it's not just metabolism in and of itself. The thyroid branches out and all the systems of the body have to work together so you can kind of see why if you kind of have an issue here, this could be something that kind of downstream has further implications for, for the body. Um, so what are some signs of it underperforming? That's called hypothyroidism. Um, and so these people are really going to be people that have slowed metabolic function, right? And so a lot of times they're going to be cold, um, poor digestion. We talked about that. The whole body slows down. And so part of that slowdown is going to be how food moves through you. Uh, constipation, because again, you're not digesting it as well. Hair falling out. Um, this can be thyroid, um, hypothyroidism. Uh, so if you got those issues going on and you coach people or even you don't coach people and, and you know, you've had those symptoms, you might want to take a look at your thyroid. Uh, muscle weakness. Uh, we talked about how, you know, cascades down to the musculature, joint or muscle pain, depression. So if your thyroid is really low and you don't have enough thyroid hormone, you might just feel really sluggish and just kind of down and blue, uh, pale, dry skin, brain fog. So that's kind of like searching for your words, stammering over words, maybe not having to be able to make as quick decisions as you once did. Um, and then you might also have like malabsorption of minerals in the gut, things like that. And that really just comes from you know, the digestion system not being as optimal anymore. So you can kind of get that downstream problem uh, into minerals and absorption as well. Hey, Jason, um, if, if yeah. you don't mind, can we go back to that slide? I want to just bring up a couple things here and get your take on it. Um, a lot of these symptoms we also see with low testosterone, right? And, and for our coaches and our other people out there that have you know, they've got a decent testosterone level, but they're also feeling some of these symptoms. 
how often have you seen this come back and the thyroid's out of whack? Because, you know, if you, you, def, you definitely feel a lot of this stuff, this feels like low testosterone, but I yeah. see a lot of crossover. What about you? Yeah. I mean, it's an empty, it's, it's a, it's kind of a mixed bag for me um, with me owning a hormone clinic, advanced vitality. I get a lot of people come to me and, and they are right. You know, it is their hormones, but, but certainly, um, you know, poor digestion, being cold, uh, muscle weakness, joint pain, brain fog. I mean, that can be low testosterone or, you know, in women, it could be any of the three kind of are out of balance. So 100%, it could definitely be hormones. So you got to definitely be doing a very broad, uh, panel, um, you know, to, to check these things, you want to get all the, the thyroid hormone that we're going to talk about. And then you also want to get all the hormones, um, the sex hormones as well. So you don't want to just kind of narrow your search down to the thyroid. Yeah. And one other question I had that, you know, for folks like you and I that have been around for a long time, old school, we used to measure body temperature first thing in the morning. Is that something? So for anybody that's listening and they think about, well, should I ever just measure my body temperature? What are, you, what are your takes on that? Do you think that's a valid way to kind of assess and see yeah. if you're off? I think you can. I think it has to be, I don't remember the number, like you should be above 97 point something before you get out of bed. So if you're in the 96s, uh, or some under this number, technically you probably have a slowed metabolism. I don't do it much. I just get labs. I mean, everyone coming to me has usually got issues unless they're coming to me for prep. So I, I'm getting labs no matter what before I'm even worrying about that. But sure, they could do it. I just don't remember what the temperature truly is. I don't know. I don't either. Yeah. So. All right, moving on. So it can, your thyroid can also be in a hyper state. So that would be like you're sped up and it's called hyperthyroidism. We don't see it as much, um, but that would come with heart palpitations. Now, what can happen is if you did have low, so you were hypo and they put you on meds and the med needs to be adjusted and they put you on too much, you could feel the effects of this. Uh, otherwise, a lot of times this might be Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune condition, which I talk about at the bottom, um, which I don't see much at all. So a lot of times these hyperthyroid uh, issues are, you know, someone's taking a thyroid product, they're taking too much kelp, um, or their meds have been adjusted and it's too much. Um, but again, uh, if it comes out of nowhere and none of those situations are in play, you could have Graves and you need to get checked for autoimmunity. Um, so heart palpitations, uh, with hyperthyroidism, anxiety and jitters. Uh, you, you might sleep poorly. Uh, you can be losing weight when you're not trying. Um, you know, it might have heat intolerance. You know, you're just always hot um, and you're sweating. Uh, too frequent a bowel movement. So we'll see diarrhea with someone who's hyperthyroidism. Uh, menstrual disturbances, uh, mental issues. So, you know, could still be depression, things like that, anxiety, as we talked about. And then if it's left unchecked and it is Graves' disease, uh, it, it can cause bulging of the eyes. You've seen, maybe seen that. I've seen it a couple times out in the public. It's it's rare. Um, and then, like I said, this could be if none of those issues were going on, you're not taking a supplement, you didn't take a new product, you didn't get meds, and this all of a sudden you start feeling these things, you know, you, you could, should probably get checked for Graves' um, autoimmune condition. And you do that by checking your TPO, ABs and your thyroglobulin antibody um, on labs. Uh, and if those are elevated, um, and you're having these types of symptoms, you might have Graves, uh, disease. Um, but like I said, you're going to be seeing more hypo, uh, especially if you're a coach or in the fitness world, than you do ever see hyperthyroidism. Um, so how's the thyroid work? Uh, so it starts in the brain. Um, that's why a lot of times we say, Thyroid is a symptom, not a cause, meaning it's not the first thing to go. It's usually caused by some other root cause. And if you think about that, the brain can be inflamed. Neuroinflammation um, happens a lot. As we age, inflammation is what they call it. That's cellular level inflammation. The immune system's involved. And you can have neuroinflammation. Um, and these types of things go left unchecked. You can end up with, you know, um, dementia and different things. But if you've got inflammation here, you might not be releasing uh, from the hypothalamus, um, the thyrotropin releasing hormone TRH that you need to then stimulate the pituitary, which then releases thyroid stimulating hormone. So it starts in the brain with the hypothalamus, sends out a signal TRH, tells the pituitary to produce TSH. TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay. And this tells the thyroid gland to make T4. Now, T4 is not 
what drives the thyroid. That still has to be converted uh, to T3. Um, so, but let's go back to TSH before we get too far. So if the body needs more T4, the, the body produces more TSH. The body needs less, it produces less TSH. So if you're thinking out there in, 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 in um, podcast land, you want TSH to be lower, not higher. If it's rising, then your thyroid is trying to overwork and it's not producing and it's not sensing hormones. So it's going to be cranking out TSH. Okay. So if you see a high TSH, the body is trying to over overcompensate and create hormone. Okay. So we want that around one to two. Um, and, and I say that there at the bottom. Okay. So that's TSH and it is a number that we do check, um, but it should not be the be all tell all uh, in thyroid health. All right. So once the TSH is released, that tells the body to create T4. Okay. Once T4 hits the bloodstream, converted to T3. And that process is a weird word, deiodination. All right. So basically, T4 is to convert to T3. If you know that and understand <laughs> that, you'll be fine. Uh, you don't have to have a scientific degree to be able to understand the way these processes work and then get to the root cause to help someone. Um, T3 is a thyroid hormone that fuels metabolism, okay? It's the main and end game player. It's the active hormone. Um, so, you know, once T4 is converted to T3, they both can exert a negative feedback on TSH, lowering it. So again, the body's going to sense T4 and T3 amounts. If it's not feeling there's enough, TSH is going to rise. And that's going to then hopefully tell the body to make more but it really should be able to do its job in the one to two area. And that's where the thyroid is going to be healthy. Um, okay. So what vitamins and minerals are needed to support the thyroid and help these conversion processes? So you need iodine, selenium, vitamin D, tyrosine, zinc, magnesium, and vitamin A. And before I go forward, magnesium is so important and most people are deficient in it. 200 mg uh, is probably enough for most people. Um, you can get like a magnesium bisglycinate. Um, I don't use citrate or oxides unless someone has really bad constipation. And then I use it maybe as a tool, not something forever. Um, but magnesium is a, a huge one here. Iodine and selenium are major, but even vitamin D, like so many people are, are um, deficient in it. I mean, I see it all the time. And now they really want you in the 60 to 80 range. Uh, they used to say 40 to 60 um, so a lot of people are deficient there. So there's a lot of deficiencies, uh, in these, in these areas. Uh, if you're on birth control, it'll zap zinc, magnesium, and selenium. So how, how well do you think your thyroid's going to run? So we see a lot of sluggish thyroid on birth control because women aren't told that, that, you know, the birth control is going to zap selenium. It's going to zap zinc. It's going to zap magnesium. It's going to take away vitamin C. It's going to take away your B vitamins. So if you're on birth control, you should be supplementing those. That's a whole other topic, but it's just, you know, you can kind of see how different things play into causing, um, you know, the, the symptom thyroid issue uh, rather than the thyroid being the actual problem. Uh, iodine, most essential element in the thyroid, um, and it's needed to make T3 and T4. So that conversion, again, that we're talking about. Um, 500 micrograms per day will support the production. We usually see that worked up higher at times, 100 micrograms, probably you get to 200, you're going to start feeling a little over revved up. So, you know, word to the wise, somewhere around there. Selenium, it's an antioxidant and it plays a crucial role in thyroid hormone metabolism. Uh, it helps clean up and remove free radicals that were created during the generation of thyroid hormone. Um, so that's really important to keeping it, it healthy. Uh, 50 to 100 micrograms would be a pretty standard supplement dosing uh, on selenium. Um, and again, if you're on birth control, you're definitely going to be repleted of that. So you might want to consider uh, supplementing. Hey, e Jason, real quick, uh, back on the iodine, uh, just because I know there are a couple of people will probably think of this. Um, in the world of bodybuilding, where you and I are heavily involved, bodybuilders think, well, if a little bit's great, then a ton must be great. Any issues there with uh, really cranking down on the iodine supplementation? I mean, if you're definitely sluggish, um, you know, keep going until you, I mean, so where do you want your free T3? You want it, um, 
about 3.3 to 4.2. Those are your, your ranges, anything under two, or I'm sorry, anything under three, you're starting to get into sluggish and then under 2.2, you're clinically low. So, I mean, everyone's going to be different and it's going to be based on what they can absorb and everything else. But I would start at 50 to hundred and then take your labs and assess. Cause yeah, I mean, if you send yourself into a hyper state, um, in short bursts, not a huge deal, but it, over time, you're shortening your life. Just the heart's going to work harder constantly yeah. and you're just going to be revved up and it's possible it could start to have cortisol issues because you're just so sped up all the time. So it's not a good thing and short bursts. Sure. I mean, bodybuilders take T3, don't they? And that's probably making them right. hyper. We just don't want to stay in that state long-term because it will take years off your life by just that constant up, yeah. up regulation of the heartbeat. Gotcha. All right. Vitamin D. Um, so, you know, there's a few studies here, uh, you know, that hyperthyroidism um, is goes hand in hand with lower vitamin D levels. OK. Um, so, you know, we definitely want to supplement um, 5000 IU daily with K as a good starting point. Um, I think all vitamin D should be supplemented with K. It will replete K, which is vitamin K and vitamin K has to, it helps, uh, arteries stay pliable. So they stay more, uh, well, they stay pliable. And then that way there's less chance for blockage. If you take vitamin D without, you're going to replete K and that's not a good place to be. So you take it with your K. Um, so we have a great one at new ethics, um, our new D and it's also got some Rishi in it as well but you want K with it. Um, so word to the wise there, if you're going to supplement vitamin D. Tyrosine, it's an amino acid. And now this combines with the iodine and that helps it create T3 and T4. Um, so if you don't have enough tyrosine, you just won't make enough proper thyroid hormones. 50 milligrams per day will suffice for thyroid health on this. So the others were micrograms, just note. And then this is milligram, okay? Uh, you got zinc, plays a large role with thyroid health. It's involved in making TSH. Remember, TSH is further up the line. That's the thyroid stimulating hormone that comes from the pituitary, right? So that's also needed for conversion of T4 to T3. So a lot of these minerals are playing with the uh, with the conversion, okay? And that, you know, poor conversion will definitely cause TSH to rise. Uh, the body won't sense there's enough T3, and so you're going to see TSH rising. So Sometimes high TSH is, is an autoimmune condition called Hashi's or Graves, but other times it's a conversion issue. And so you might want to start looking into your minerals and vitamins. Um, two MIGs here will suffice. Um, you can go a little higher, obviously, on zinc. I mean, you, I think you can take it up to 30 MIGs, um, but somewhere two to 30 uh, is fine. But the literature says two MIGs will, yeah. will suffice, assuming you absorb well magnesium as we said it's super important for over like two or three hundred conversions in the body and different uh processes uh, that's again necessary to convert an active t4 into active t3 again birth control will replete this so not a good place to be um so as little as 20 milligrams will help uh, but you can take a thousand mg safely uh it's just the higher you go the more likely you might start getting loose stools uh, yeah. i would start 200 milligrams. Usually that doesn't cause anyone any issues. And um, I, I think that would be a, a nice starting point. Um, vitamin A, deficiency of vitamin A increases pituitary um, gland synthesis, cranking out TSH, which can cause an overworked thyroid. So if you're deficient in A, the pituitary will overcrank TSH. Okay. And then this can cause you to be hyper. OK, so 600 micrograms will suffice there. We always make sure we have that in our um, thyroid boost product. All of these are in our thyroid boost product, but vitamin A, definitely an important player as well. Um, so if you see a high TSH, maybe they have a vitamin A uh, deficiency, especially if you rule off an autoimmune condition. Um, so as I said earlier, thyroid issues are usually a symptom, not the cause. So high cortisol and poor cortisol metabolism can cause issues. Stress, uh, SIBO, so small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, issues with the gut because you're not absorbing minerals well. Um, neuroinflammation, like I said, it starts at the hypothalamus. So if you have neuroinflammation, you can have a sluggish thyroid. The process is going to be slowed down, okay? Um, autoimmunity issues, which generally do start in the gut or at least have a gut component called leaky gut. 
Uh, and then malabsorption of issues is uh, of nutrients, I'm sorry, is another one. Um, so you know what? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I added neuroinflammation. So we got seven there, and we're not even talking about, you know, toxic buildup and all these different things that that could, you know, play, excuse me, a role in thyroid. But these are some of the main ones that I see in my nutrition uh, practice. Labs to run. This is important. Um, I will say this. Uh Doctors are amazing. We need them. Uh, if I get, you know, stabbed to, in the heart or whatever, I'm going to the, I'm going to a, a doctor, but they are still in the, in the old ages when it comes to running thyroid. Generally what they're going to run is TSH and T4. And off of that, they're going to make a determination on how healthy your thyroid is. Now, didn't I just tell you that the thyroid ultimate goal is to make active unbound T3 to fuel the metabolism. So why in the hell wouldn't we look at T3? It makes right. no sense. So we want to run a full panel. Okay. So if your GP, you know, runs just TSH and T4, they didn't have the full panel. And I think it's even worse when, when meds are prescribed based on those, because, Hey, I've seen a small amount of T4 uh, and slightly elevated TSH and their, their free T3 is amazing. Yeah. So then why are we given hormone? So we've got to look at all things. Uh, so TSH should be checked. It should be between one to two. It can creep up. It's okay, especially if the other numbers look pretty good. This is just called ideal and optimal. Free T4. This is important. This is the usable form of T4 that actually can be converted. So total T4 is going to have some that's just inactive. It doesn't, it doesn't get, it doesn't have the ability to be um converted. It's probably being bound up by uh, some antibodies or some thyroglobulin, some other things going on. So we want the free T4 number. So that's, I care more about than total T4. Um, so this is the usable form of T4 that actually can be vert converted to active T3. Okay. I like this middle of the road to high normal. So if the range, I think for T free T4 is like uh, 0.8 to 1.7, I like it at 1.3 to 1.7 somewhere around there optimal. Okay. But again, I've seen people at 0.9 and they have amazing free T3. They're very efficient converters. Free T3. This is the usable and readily available form of T3 that your body can actually use to fuel metabolic processes. Okay. So we want free T3. I don't care as much about total T3. You could have a great total T3, but there's not much of it is, is, is unbound. I need the unbound free T3. Reverse T3. I like to see this. Now, what is happening with reverse T3? This is important. When we get stressed and we let it go chronic, some people's bodies, the way they slow themselves down or attempt to slow the body down is converting unbound free T3 to back to unusable quote unquote, reverse T3. It's unusable. Okay. It's in a form that you can't use it. Okay. So this then slows down the metabolism. So they're, tr the body's trying to calm it and bring itself down. Not a great efficient way of doing so obviously, but it is a built in process that some people do. I've seen people stress to hell and the reverse T3 is fine. What number are we looking at here? We want it under 16. Now, Reverse T3 can also show us inflammation. If it's high, you know they're inflamed. Okay, so it's it's also an inflammatory marker for me. High reverse T3, I know there's inflammation going on in that body. Okay, TPOAB, this is a thyroid antibody, and we check this to see if you have any Hashimoto's. That's an autoimmune disease where your body has decided that it sees the thyroid as a foreign invader and marks it with these antibodies to be attacked by the immune system. Okay, that's what's happening in Hashimoto's. Now, what sets this off? There are three buckets. And if you understand this, you can work any case, really any autoimmune case, stress, inflammation, and leaky gut. All three of those buckets in autoimmunity have to be controlled. I've put colitis in remission with the same formula. Now there's a lot that goes into knowing what you do with the buckets, but that is the formula and you do the same with Hashis. And so this is something that if it's left unchecked will ruin a thyroid usually in about five years, okay? Um, 
I did not have on here thyroglobulin antibody. I don't always run it, but that one is more so used to see if you have graves. Um, so again, we don't want that marked high on any lab. And same with the TPOAB. TPOAB, let's talk about the range. Some labs will say under nine, and that's all you're going to get. You're just going to see it's under nine. That's great. Some labs will give it a value. And if you're over 34 and it's marked high, they will say that's Hashi's. We really don't want it to have any value. Uh, we want it to be zero or that under nine, depending on the lab. That's as, that's as detailed as they get, sub nine. Um, as it gets over 34, that is technically Hashimoto's. Um, and thyroglobulin is the same. When it's marked high, that could be Graves. Um, but it has to do with symptoms. I've seen people with high thyroglobulin and it's just Hashimoto's. Um, so, but it is something that you can add on there. Thyroglobulin antibody. Um, shameless plug. You probably know I own New Ethics. Um, we have a product that we have a whole thyroid line. We have our Thyroid Boost Essentials, which is all of the vitamins and minerals only that I just talked about. We have Thyroid Boost, um, the middle one, and that is glandulars, but no active thyroid hormone, but it has the same minerals as Thyroid Boost Essentials. And then we have Thyroid Boost Plus, which has glandulars with some active thyroid hormone, plus the minerals and vitamins. I use Plus a lot, especially in my sluggish cases. I want some of that thyroid hormone in there uh, to help until I can get a handle on the case and pull the inflammation or the gut issues or whatever is, is, is really the true crux and then get them off the product. But you know, there's easier ways to add all these vitamins and minerals. Okay. So that's it. That's, that's the presentation. Uh, you know, I've got quite a few things here that I want to talk about here. Now that we're to the questions, comment section, uh, back to the thyroid boost, you don't have to go back, but let our listeners know I'll have that in the comments and the description. You guys can just click on that and be able to get a bottle of it. Um, it's definitely one of those supplements when all my clients are dieting, it's huge. It's huge. Or if I'm trying to fix any kind of uh, yeah. thyroid lab. So I, I guess I can speak. I heard this presentation a few years ago, like I said, learned a lot from it. And for other people out there like me, John, three, four years ago, one of the biggest takeaways I got was not only understanding the chain and the processes and why free tea was so important to be able to get that marker. But one of the biggest game changers for me was understanding reverse T3 and understanding that the body was stressed. And when reverse T3 is high, just like you said, it's trying to slow the body down and it converts, uh, it, it lowers uh, T3, right? So exactly. a lot of times what I would see is I would see when reverse T3 was high, I knew I had to address cortisol. So that's what I want to talk about just really quick. Um, what are some methods to lower reverse T3? And if people want to go back and listen to our cortisol episode, it's back in the archive should be episode number two, one of the very first ones that we ever did. Um, but lowering reverse T3, how important um, is that? And what have you done over the years to kind of get that to drop? Yeah. So you got to remember, it's generally, as you said, a stress response and it's got, there's inflammation within the body. So you got to think about both of those things. So I run something I call a flush. Uh, really, it's just a Mediterranean diet, lots of fruit, lots of veggies, um, lower protein, higher carb, higher fat, think um, extra virgin olive oil, macadamia nut, et cetera. And I use our OptiPure and I use our MetaPure. I run that for 14 days. I pull their training down. I put them in yoga. They're doing a lot of restorative yoga from home. They're walking 10,000 steps. I pull training. I get the body uninflamed, put the training back in at a lighter amount, keep them fed. And I also give them thyroid boost plus during this time. And the real big thing is lowering that stress so the body doesn't feel like it has to do it for it. And once you can counter that, then you've got something going on. So you generally have to pull back. You have to do pretty much the opposite of every damn thing you're doing. You're probably overtraining, you're probably under eating, and you got to just do the opposite. And I just put it on its end, like no training, you're going to walk, you're going to do restorative yoga. Oh, you're eating 1100, you're going to eat 2100, but I'm going to take low protein, you are doing high, you're going to use a lot of veggies berries and a lot of fat. And um, then I hit them with those products to crank on the liver, get the detox going, Metapure, Optipure, bring them out of that, leave them on 2000 calories, make them chill. And usually everything will start to, uh, to go in your favor from there. 
Yeah. And we'll have, we'll have other PowerPoint presentations covering a lot of the, the things that you had mentioned, you know, at some point we'll get there, you know, we'll do something on maybe the flush and detox and, and, and addressing inflammation will be a podcast and we've got all these different things to come. Uh, but this was a really good episode. If you guys ever want to message us again, see the description, the show notes, send us a message, Jason, great presentation, man. Uh, we're going to let everyone get out of here. If you guys have questions, right. hit us up for myself and Jason. We're out of here. See you guys. See you guys.